Okay, welcome. I'm Dennis Regling, and today we're going to make a puppet head. Okay, I've got my trusty pattern. We're going to make a simple round head puppet. I've already cut one half out of the head. I've got the other one traced. And to cut this foam, I'm going to use a brand new razor blade. Okay, foam will dull your razor blades very, very quickly. So it's important to use a sharp blade, change them often. You can cut foam with scissors. Now these are my old scissors. I will use these to trim foam, I will use these to cut foam, but foam will also dull scissors very, very quickly. So I have an old pair I will use. The scissors I use for cloth and fleece are set aside and used only for fabric. Okay, take good fabric scissors are important in puppet making. Buy a good pair, but take care of them. These were a, they're a nice scissor, but I do wear them out if I use them on foam. But for this, I'm going to use the razor blade. And when you're cutting with the razor blade or scissors, you want to make sure to keep your blade straight up and down. You don't want to curve it unless you're looking for a beveled edge. You want up and down because you will get a beveled edge. It won't glue as smooth. Um, a slight bevel here or there with the foam, you can generally fix. It's not a big deal. But we do want to try and keep it straight up and down. Okay, I'm drawing towards me. I can save this piece. I'll be able to get a finger tube or out of this piece so I don't throw away every piece of foam. <laughs> right across there. Starting with there's already a cut, sometimes it's, it wants to pull, so I'll just do part way and I'll go back and get the rest. But this is a simple half inch foam. a link to where to purchase this foam at the bottom of the video down below the video I'll be making several videos as I construct this puppet so you're going to want to subscribe to my channel if you like what you see please put a like um, I know it's very easy to be critical very easy to to dislike and negative things. Um, if you really see something I need to improve, please let me know. Because I want to get better. So if there's something you don't like, please don't just hit a negative and you know, without you know, getting a hold of me. Help, let me let me know what I can do better. So I got my two halves of the head here. It's gonna be a simple round head puppet. This is where the arm goes in. This dart here helps make the head round. This is the mouth. We can see him from the side. Now, I like to use barge cement. Some people use hot glue. There's other cements you could use. You can use spray contact cement. I like the Elmer spray contact. It exactly works very good for me. Um, but for this, I'll use this on fleece and cloth a lot of times. Go for a quick fix, but the barge is really a heavy duty glue. The barge is actually originally made for shoe repair, holding leather and cloth, and so it's very, very strong when it's bound, bonded. It's a very strong bond. You don't want to really get the glue on too thick, it's a little thick there. Alright, to get inside the dart, 
sometimes it's easiest just to fold it over. And again, I'm trying not to get the glue on too thick. Before we can glue these pieces, before we can glue these pieces, the barge actually has to dry. Okay, I think I did this off camera. Okay, but you fold this over, it's easier to glue. I've got my element, my barge there. I'm going to get some barge here. I apologize for anything that was off camera. It's sometimes hard to remember where the camera's shooting. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now this has to dry. Some people use a hair dryer. Hair dryer is a great way to speed it right up. Um, I don't have a hair dryer right now. In the shop, I've never used a hair dryer in the shop. But I've seen Barry Gortner and BJ Geyer and other professionals, very good product makers, and they'll use it and it speeds it right up. I have too much glue there, too much cement. I'll get this here. So that's much better. Just a light, light coat. I'll try and take some of this back off. I'm using the brush, as you can tell. Um, a lot of times, you can use just a piece of foam itself and dab it on. You get really all the all the cement you need just dabbing it. As I did off camera earlier, I'm going to fold the, the dart over. Makes it very easy to get the whole dart. Okay, I'm not wearing my latex gloves. I usually wear gloves when I do this. I'll put my gloves on definitely before I join it. This stuff's a real... It's, it's sticky. It gets on your hand. It doesn't like to wash off. I've got one more side. I'm going to show you something. I mentioned using a piece of sponge. I put a lot of a lot of contact cement right there on the end, end of the sponge. Then I just dab it on. And it's not much. And you say, well, that's not a lot of cement there. And you actually don't need a lot. Just dab on a little bit, a little dab will do ya. Get that on there. So, you use a piece of sponge, just dab it on, gets it nice and thin, we don't want to, we don't want a whole lot of cement, we don't need a whole lot of cement. Now these needs to dry, sometimes I blow on them, that works. This is not my pattern, I will leave a link to where this pattern is. It is a free pattern on, it is a, this is, this is a free pattern, it's available online, but it's not my pattern. I'll leave you a link to this. I will be making a video later on how to make your own patterns. Um, as I mentioned, when this glue gets on, the cement gets on your hand, it's, it's not happy thought. This is something Barry Gortner recommended, I'm so glad he did. It's called Detach All. They use this to remove makeup and synthetic scars in, that in the movies and for actors. It also works very, very good for taking the glue off your hands. So you get some cement on your hands, some glue, you sticky, get some spray adhesive on. This takes it right off. Okay, it works really, really good. So I'm not sure how dry these are yet. Long little hair on the bottom. Get my latex gloves. Latex gloves are available very, very inexpensively. I'm one of those guys, I use the same glove several times. <laughs> you know, as long as it's usable, I'll take them off, use them again. So it makes it very, very inexpensive. 
to protect your hands with the cement gets rid of a lot of frustration later. You see, I got some glue, some cement stuck on these. And if that was my fingers, that'd be a real pain. These I can throw away when I'm done. If they get too much glue and paste on them. My regular fingers, I can't really throw those away. I mean, I, I like to keep those. So, I'm going to piece these together. Very carefully. Pinch. And hold. Okay, it's coming apart a little. It's not quite dry enough yet. There we go. It pinches together. I'm going to go ahead and force it a little bit. i get those edges nice and even. Get those nice and even there. Get those evened up. You'll notice this one piece of foam is actually a little more yellow than the other piece. And that's just because this has been sitting out. All foam will yellow over time. Okay, even the green foams will yellow. So it's, this is a new, something in the new batch I got, and this is an old batch. <laughs> right, I'll bring, these, bring up the darts. I'll get to meet right there in the middle, right there in the middle where it needs to be. I pinch that together. And get that right up there in the center. That's looking good there. I got one more here to go. Start at the bottom, get that bottom lined up. Just pushed in. Pinch it good. And there's my nice round puppet head. <clears throat> this is step one. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn it inside side out. The seams right now, they're kind of up. If I turn it inside out. Or outside in, either one works. Those seams even right up. Look at that. Those seams are a lot nicer now. Make sure those pinch good. So sometimes turning this out makes a huge difference. I want to get some cloth over the inside of the mouth before I put it in. Some people do that afterwards. I like to do it ahead of time. For me, it just works better. So this is a nice foam. Makes for a nice inside mouth. I'm actually not going to cut it out yet. Save that. All I do is I'll actually glue it all, put it down, and then I'll trim off the excess. It gives me a nice, perfect edge. That's still drying. And I'm going to use the contact cement. If I go slightly outside the line, that's okay, but I definitely want to get that edge. So, oh, he's outside the lines. Yes, we color outside the lines in the puppet shop. Get that coated good. And I try to get the extra, the extra off. Same thing here. Now, I've got gaffer's tape. I'm going to have foam, I've got denim, that is a one strong joint, one strong mouth. Again, 
again, try to get the excess off. Don't want it puddling. The mouth is nowhere to cut corners on string. Don't have a hair dryer, but awful lot of hot air. Blow on a little bit. You can see here there's a little puddling there. So there we go. No, it's tacky. It's good and tacky. Get that in there good. That's that's great. Then I said I'll cut off the foam um, around the edge. So you can use felt, you can use foam, um, red cloth of any kind, black, pink, whatever color you want the inside of your mouth. This craft foam is nice. I do have a big roll of red felt. Let me use red felt's really nice for the inside of the mouth. And then use a black or dark purple craft foam for the tongue and such, or a pink tongue. At this point, our mouth is ready to go in the puppet. Hello. Nice and strong. I can add a tongue later, tonsils later. Okay. I want to get the glue on the, the cement on the on the polyfoam, on the on the cardboard um, poster board there. But I'm also getting that foam. See this this foam I have gives me an extra grip. Help hold them all together better. Together. I said together, not together. The one caveat of putting on the uh, inside mouth liner, whether it's cloth or craft foam first, is you want to be very careful not to get your contact cement on it. I'll keep the inside of that mouth clean. Now. Mouth is going to go inside. So I've got to get my glue here. And the key to the head is the corners of the mouth. You want to get the corners of the mouth done right. You want a good, strong bond at the corners of the mouth. Again, the corner of the mouth is what's going to take the most wear and tear. Get me inside here. Oh, inside. Now it's going to dry. I'm going to let this, these dry. Make sure you put it in. You put the thumb on the bottom. <laughs> I'm going to 
they just dry for a little bit. When, when you give them, they dry, they get nice and tacky. As soon as that glue hits, it bonds. Pretty soon he's going to have a mouth. I won't we'll worry about the ears and the eyes and the hair after we get the neck and the body done. He's coming together nice. <clears throat> Now, get this in here. This is not the easy part. Look, get that mouth and that, that egg, that corner. Get the other corner up here. Then I'll bring the lips over. A little tug of war at times. Foam does have some stretch. Okay, I'm not in that corner. I've got to get up in that corner. Right there. Got to be in that corner. Got to be in that corner. This on here. Actually, got a little extra lip I don't want. Just getting in there nice. Corner of that mouth good. There we go. Hands inside. Hello, I'm Mr. Puppet Head. There he is. So he's looking good. Okay, we got that part done. And later we'll, we'll fleece it, of course. Fleece it, do the neck, the cloth neck, and do the <clears throat> the body. He's looking good. You see again the inside that just slides right in. Depending on the size of your hand, I might want to bring that up a little bit. I'm happy with it. There's the head, ready for features, cloth, cloth and features. So we'll talk about those in another video. Now, we have our head. Yeah, turn this side out. It's looking very good. My little puppet head mouth. Hi. Right. What we're gonna do now is make a mouth to go in this. There are several different materials you can use for a mouth plate. I like to use the foam core board. It's got paper on the outside, foam in the middle. I like to use the foam core. It's pretty inexpensive. It makes a nice durable mouth. I won't use this regular corrugated cardboard um, that will over time break down because it doesn't have the rigidity of the foam core. Got my mouth pattern. Trace around the mouth pattern here. Now, very key, ok, 
Okay, is these are the this is the center of the mouth. I want to mark center lines. I'm going to mark it on the inside. If I cut it away, then it'll be gone. Center mark is very, very important because that's where we're going to cut and hinge our mouth. And I misplaced my, ah, uh, there's my razor blade. Razor blade again works very good for cutting foam core. Got enough there for another mouth. And again, we want to try and keep the razor up and down, perfectly straight. And you can use scissors to cut the foam core. Of course, a little thick, not the easiest thing to cut with scissors. Even using the razor blade, it usually takes two cuts to get all the way through. So I put too much pressure, then it's hard to make my curves and get the blade to go where I want it to go. For a straight line, I can put a lot of pressure getting one curve. But you'll see here. Parts of it are still kind of stuck. It did not go all the way through. That's okay because it's more important to me to get a nice scribe in there. It now guides the blade and I go a little deeper and hopefully get through all that paper. Sure, I make this look harder than it is. And there we go. Got a little bit right here to trim off. Trim that up nice. Sometimes I'll use this razor blade knife. It's nice. It's nice for cutting. But just an ordinary razor blade's good. Lots of tools in the shop. The more tools you have, the easier it is to get things done. I have the right tool for the right job. Now, I'm going to cut this line, but I do not want to go all the way through. What I want to do is leave a small hinge on it. I'm not going all the way through. I'm really just scoring it. And then I'll crack it. I crack the rest of the styrofoam, polyfoam. And there is my mouth. Got a nice little hinge. But this hinge isn't very strong. This hinge could wear out. So we need to make our hinge stronger. You can glue, glue on cloth, denim, a lot of times uh, make a nice strong hinge. You can use duct tape. I'm going to use gaffer's tape. I like gaffer's tape better than duct tape. Gaffer's, G-A-F-F-E-R-S. I use this in the theater to tape down wires so people won't trip over them, those sort of things. It's not real easy doing this with the gloves on. The gloves want to stick. Yes, the gloves like to stick. So we're going to take the gloves off. Oh, we must have getting serious. We're taking the gloves off. <laughs> okay. And there's a nice hinge. Now, I'm going to tape over the back of the hinge. But when you tape over the back of the hinge, on the inside of the mouth, I lay it flat. The inside mouth, I lay it flat when I put the cloth on, and then it'll, it'll fold right up. If you put it flat on the back side, it's not going to bend. 
So you need to open it up before you put your tape on. Okay, you don't want to let it flat. You want to open it up. Open it up. Fold it over. Over that, keep that nice flat edge. And this way, you see it'll hinge up nice. But it, well, it doesn't fold the other way. It doesn't fold the other way because that tape's not going to go anywhere. Trim this up nice. Again, not with my fabric scissors, with my trusty just the doll cut anything scissors. Sadly, they, they will continue to get more and more doll in one of these days. I'll have to throw them away. But not today. So there's my basic mouth. Get the inside the puppet. And he'll have a mouth. But we need more than this. Okay, one thing I'll show you is what if I didn't have a pattern for my, for my mouth? Well, I made my own puppet pattern, and I didn't have a pattern for the mouth. You actually make your own pattern, and I don't have any scrap paper at the moment. I normally use craft paper, which I don't have laying around at the moment because I don't need any craft paper. So, now this is... This is foam. I wouldn't use this Norman to make a puppet mouth pattern. But you know, you'll just basically make your pattern, you fold it over, trace the top, trace the bottom, and you'd have your pattern, and then you can trace it and cut it out. Of course, I use craft paper. I don't use foam. But I don't have craft paper available at, the very, at this very moment. Because I already had my pattern. I didn't need the craft foam for pattern making. Now, we would need to make this mouth stronger. This mouth gets all the work. This mouth gets all the work. So we want a nice strong mouth. We want to be able to grip it. We want to be able to move it. We want it to hold up to use. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some cloth on the back to strengthen it. Put my mouth pattern away here. I'll use my patterns. Take care of that stuff. Some t-shirt fabric. I'm going to be using that. T-shirt fabric. I'll be using that later. Put for the back. Let's see what I have. And you can nice because you can use any scrap cloth. This is an old pair of jeans that my little girls literally wore out playing around the house. But we don't throw away denim. We keep denim. We keep denim for puppets. Yeah, took a look. There we go. And this sheet's pretty much had it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put glue on the back of the mouth plate. For this, you can use contact cement. I mentioned I like to spray adhesive. This is much quicker, much easier. Spray that on there. Blowing out just a little bit. 
drop a little bit. Doesn't need to be real dry. Take the denim, put it right over the mouth. Push it. I don't want to push it flat because I got that hinge. I'm going to bend it over. Bend it over. I almost pushed it flat. That would have been bad news. Bring it right over the hinge. Get that strengthened up in there. Not only will this make the mouth much stronger, but it gives a nice surface for gluing to. That denim does. You can get old denim jeans cheap at the uh, thrift stores. Salvation Army, Goodwill. I got that on there. And of course I need to trim this up. But we're getting a very, very strong mouth. Don't skimp on the mouth. I've seen some puppet videos where they use make really skimpy mouths. I've seen them use just cardstock and cheap cardboard, corrugated cardboard. They don't cover it. Corrugated cardboard, even if you cover it, although it would give it strength, corrugated cardboard will break down from moisture. So your hands are sweaty. It's going to soak through the denim and destroy the cardboard. A lot of puppeteers, professional puppeteers, wear white gloves when they do puppeteering. And the white glove helps protect the puppet from sweat. You've got a very expensive professional puppet. That's a good idea. But now we got a nice strong mouth there. But we're not done. I'm going to be putting some pink felt on the inside of the mouth. Well, you know that tape, that's maybe not, that's too light. We'll use black felt or dark red. But before we do that, okay. we're going to work on our finger tubes. We need a way to grip this. Okay, here's a finger tube. Just a piece of foam rolled over, finger slides right in. We're going to make some of those. Remember I said I was saving that white foam? Well, here we go. We're going to use this, some of those, that foam from where I trimmed the puppet. About one inch wide ruler. Oh, I really need for a strip. No. This won't work too good. That's kind of small. Okay, let's see, this is six inches. Good, I don't need six inches. So that's plenty. Okay, I want that nice wide grip. And I should be able to slip one out of here. I'll take a couple cuts. Get me a nice straight line. This much rectangled. I can figure out how much I need for a finger tube. Right about there. Right about there. It's 
snip that off. Make it if I tube it. It's nice. It'll be a little snug. And because the foam gives, it works good a little bit bigger fingers can go in there, a little bit smaller fingers, it'll still hold tight. Let's go ahead and do the other one. Another finger tube. Some tube, same dealy. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to be putting finger and thumb tubes on here. But you can, and it's easier for you, actually just make a hand strap. You foam it here square, glue it there square, bring it over, keep it down pretty close, and your hand would slide right in. And that will also work very nice, very easy. Some people use elastic. They'll put elastic across there. I like the finger tubes. I think it gives me a lot of control. Okay, let's measure our thumb. There we go. That's my thumb. I remember which one's which. Now I can use contact cement, barred cement, which is really nice. I'm going to do these really quick with contact cement. And then we'll use the barge when we attach them. I can't prove it. That's my hunch, is that the barge is a little bit stronger than the contact cement. I've wore this pair of gloves before. <laughs> there we go. Give me a quick spray. Together. Okay, I want something quick there, not so much strong, because my strength is going to be when I attach it to the mouth. Bring these together. I marked, I marked the thumb, so I'll make, make sure I get, because it's a little tad bigger, so I get that on the bottom. There we go. Now, get up my contact cement. Before I do that, I need to figure out where these things are going to go. And the finger tubes, they go next to each other. Finger tubes go next to each other. Middle finger goes on top. Oh, I'm right about there. Right about there. I'm going to mark the front of the tube, the sides of the tube. So now I know they're going to go, and that's the part I'm going to glue, <laughs> that's cement. With the butt of the thumb, I'll do the same thing. Thumb placement is crucial. You get too far over, or too, too far to one side or the other, so I'll change up your movement. Contact cement. Contact cement there. I'm putting the seam down. Put the seam down because it seems the weak point. 
it'll be, it'll be glued here, glued here, the seam won't matter. Same with the finger tubes. Whoa. And then, of course, those will flatten out. And I put them on the board. Okay, I, I mark where I want my tubes. Get my contact cement in there. Down here for the thumb. I need to let that. Dry. This is where, for a video, a hair dryer would come in handy. A regular puppet making, well, these are drying, I'd be doing something else, getting the next step ready. And yeah, speaking of the next step. I'm going to make some strips. And I'm going to actually end up putting these around here on the outside edge to give me something to glue to the head. So I'm not just using the edge of the board. You know what? That, that's going to work. I'll just make one more of those and save these for something else. They might be eyebrows. What I will be doing is putting these around the edge of the mouth, and this will become a glue strip for inside the mouth. This edge is very thin, doesn't give you much place, much room for cement. A thicker binding will. Go ahead and get these ready. Because again, the cement needs to dry. Whoa, that's too, way too much there, way too much there. With the puddles, you definitely have too much. I mean, it will dry, it just takes longer. These are flippy floppy. These don't like to hold still. But I'm not gluing these together. I'm just going to take some of the glue off the one, the cement, get it on that other piece. Yeah, I'm not gluing them. I'm just getting a little glue beak, some of the extra cement off that strip. Got to put it where it won't tip over. And I'll just go ahead now and glue where I'm going to put my strips. Around the outside edge. Looks like the thumb tube square is pretty dry. Put my thumb tube on. And my finger tubes. I'll go there and there. Okay, 
so we're getting it. See, this foam here, it's going to make, a not, make it nice for gluing inside the mouth now. So I actually have a surface I can glue to when it dries. Put that on a little bit wet. And the same with the other side. I like to do this. I, I, not everyone does it. It's something I picked up. I don't know where, but I like it. I like being able to have a full surface anytime. You can make your surface a little bit bigger for gluing. It's going to be that much better. There's my mouth. Hello. How to get this camera angle. But the middle finger goes on top, thumbs in there, a lot of control, still kind of wet. Now I have some t-shirt fabric. I mentioned that earlier. I'm going to use this to strengthen, again, my mouth. do is put this right over here that mouth will be that much stronger with that cloth okay I'm gonna need at least one straight edge here I need a straight edge I really just kind of ripped that off there These are handy. These are, these are for cutting fabric. Never use these on your foam. You're going to destroy them. I wish I could use this on foam. It's a cutting wheel, but it would destroy that. That foam would destroy that edge so quick. Get that one simple cut. Beautiful straight edge for the for the mouth. I'll be able to lay that right over there bring that down in and then I'll trim off the excess spray adhesive is good for cloth trying to do is get a nice strong strong mouth and it's not necessary to, to put the t-shirt cloth on there but it will give it more strength this is not going to be no baby mouth this is going to be a very sturdy very strong mouth when I'm done okay I'm just tucking that in there tuck that in spray adhesive will dry in a little bit I'll be trimming this away from my glue edge. Trimming that away. Uh, 
a little extra there. And this all dries up, and that is going to be strong, and that's going to help. I want this mouth to hold together. And a little more for the other side. Old t-shirts again, Family Dollar Store. Buck, not Family Dollar. Goodwill, a buck. a nice straight line here Right here a little bit. I can tuck that cloth in. If you're feeling really ambitious, you can actually bring the t-shirt over the edge there and then cut that back out. This is inside the mouth so it will not be seen so it doesn't have to be beautiful we just want it strong the ability of a puppet i want every piece to be strong there's no doubt about that that gives the finger tubes a little more a little more strength a little less chance of tearing although i've never had them tear when i don't cover them i don't always cover them for a good for a puppet I want to last, I'm going to go over the top here. And let's see if I can get my mouth up here. There's my mouth. Yeah, glue needs to dry a little bit, but that's the mouth. And we're looking pretty good.